We shall be reading from the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms, Psalm 96. Psalm 96, verse 1. O sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless His name. Proclaim the good news of His salvation from day to day. Declare His glory among the nations, His wonders among all peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before Him. Strength and beauty are in His sanctuary. Give to the Lord, O families of the peoples, give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due His name. Bring an offering and come into His courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before Him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. He shall judge the peoples righteously. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar in all its fullness. Let the field be joyful and all that is in it. Let all the trees of the woods will rejoice before the Lord. For He is coming, for He is coming to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with His truth. Amen. Because the Lord is coming and His coming is sure and safe as the day after the deep night, as the sun comes out after darkness, and that's why, my beloved brethren, there is a prophetical proposition from the Word of God. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar in all its fullness. Let the field be joyful and all that is in it. Then all the trees of the woods will rejoice before the Lord. A proposition to the whole creation which groans and labors with birth pangs. In other words, creation has its own birth pangs. To the whole creation, which submitted itself to vanity, not because it wanted to, but because it had to. God said, after the apostasy, the backsliding of Adam and Eve, may the earth be cursed because of you, and may it grow thorns and weeds. But the whole creation, even though it groans and labors, it has one hope. It has one hope that it shall be freed from slavery and corruption and shall be transferred into the freedom of the glory of the sons of God. The whole creation, the whole universe, because all that we see shall pass away because a new earth a new heavens the Lord shall create the whole universe will come now which now groans labors will enter into the freedom of the sons of God and this hope is sure and safe and the day of the presence of the Lord no one knows but God but the signs are such in which God has revealed to the sons of God, people who glorify God, pray to God, who, ha who communicate with God, who are filled with the Holy Spirit. They are assured day by day that the Lord is coming. And the Church of Christ throughout all the earth cries out, the Lord is coming. The signs all have been fulfilled. Everything reveal. God reveals with everything that the end is coming and because the Lord is coming. 
the word of God now. Talk to the whole creation which groans and labors with birth pangs. Be happy, be glad, because the fulfillment of your hope is at hand. That you shall rise, you shall be in the resurrection of the sons of God, in the adoption of the sons of God. That day when the trumpet will be heard from heaven. God's trumpet. Hallelujah. But my beloved brethren, this proposition to the whole creation from the Word of God is a proposition for us to be careful to the prophetical word for us also. A proposition new. In those times where the hope will be without change as far as the creation is concerned because everything reveals that our Lord Jesus Christ is coming. The Word of God now is talking to His people for new things also. Sing then, you people of God, a new song, a new doxology, a new sermon, a new situation because the Lord is coming. And because God is talking to the whole creation saying, Be glad, be happy, your Redeemer and your Saviour is coming. Sing a new song to the Lord. Bless His name. Proclaim the good news of His salvation from day to day. The rapture of the church is coming. Do not be troubled. Do not worry. Of course, the times which are coming are evil and they shall be even more and more worse. In every situation, earthquakes, famine, disease. Who could ever imagine, my brethren, 20 years ago, that the economical miracle of Japan would crumble and who would ever thought that three years ago the economical crisis would hit America and Germany? Who could ever have imagined this disease? Maybe a cure will be found quickly but the consequences are tragic. In Canada for example, the most prosperous country, the disease came from a Chinese family which went to China and came back caught the disease, lived in a big apartment block, they all got the disease. When they felt sick, they went to the hospital. The doctors even got the disease. And even those who buried them died. They all died. All Canada is in a crisis. No store is open. They all walk around with masks and gloves. And when the incident stopped, the government said, so the economy can grow again, whatever you offer for five days, offer it free. So the people can come again into the stores. And when it did start, then a new incident was heard. Who could ever imagine these things? Evil times will come. Because men will leave, backslide from the healthy doctrine and will follow demons and spirits and fables and the results will be there will be evil times because people because of their unbelief will be vile, bad, evil, denying the power of godliness. But in this situation, and what can we say about violence? evil. What can we say about terrorism? Who can deal with terrorism? Thousands of bombs fell, but terrorism did not stop. Because they are in evil times. The greater danger for the Olympic Games of 2004 is this disease SARS. Because if a cure is not found, no one will come to the Olympic Games. My beloved brethren, times are evil. If one symptom is heard in Athens, all of Athens will be dead. One symptom. In Germany, one symptom was found. 
one incident and Europe is trembling. Being worldwide not only transfer products but it also transfers curses. It transfers unfaithfulness. The whole world is like a big country town now. But in these conditions of evil times which the Word of God describes to us and the Church of Christ knows very well with all assurance that times will not get better. We will not have better days as the world hopes through technology. Truly, technology increased immensely. Medicine has found new heights, reached new heights which no one could have ever imagined. But when we will say the Gospel of Jesus Christ shall preach peace and safety, then again sudden destruction will come. The Church of Christ therefore firstly knows very well that evil times will continue and increase, but it reads with joy and astonishment the proposition of the Word of God which cries out to whole creation, which groans and labors with birth pangs, and to all peoples the Lord is coming. That's why be happy and glad, rejoice, because your redemption is at hand. Be careful though that your hearts are not weighed down from everyday worries, from everyday life, from sin, mistakes, transgressions, iniquities, because that day will come like a trap, that day to the whole earth. That is therefore the first proposition. The second proposition though is, Start singing now a new song. A new song. Start a new sermon. A new testimony. The Lord will do His part, and unto my servants I shall outpour my Holy Spirit so they will prophesy. He will do His part. But now we also have to do our part, acknowledging the surroundings in which the Lord permitted us to live in, because He predestined our boundaries, our limits in which we live in. He predestined the times and seasons for the life of each one of us. He predestined when you were born and when you shall die. He has predestined everything, all the plan and the history of the human race is up under His mighty hand and His outstretched arm. Nothing is by chance in your life, nothing is by chance in the life of the whole human race. All are in the eternal, blessed, perfect plan of the most wise and most powerful God. Hallelujah. Sing therefore a new song, declare to the all the nations His glory and to all the peoples His wonders. You haven't got another job to do. There is no other proposition to the church of the later days from the Word of God, from the Holy Spirit. Your job is to declare to all the nations His glory. He will take care of everything else. He will take care to declare His virtues, proclaim His virtues when He finds people predestined, prepared, people who are holy, people who are useful tools in His hands, so He can proclaim His good news and virtues. Declare to all the nations His glory, to all the peoples His wonders, because the Lord is great, greatly to be praised, He is to be feared above all gods, and testify and preach that all the gods of the peoples are idols, only the Lord is the creator of all the universe, eternal and true God, which lives throughout eternity. But a revelation, my beloved brethren, from the Word of God to the Church of Christ, honor and majesty are before Him in the presence of God, before Him. Honor and majesty, as Apostle Peter confesses and John says that we were witnesses of His majesty and glory. In that day when we saw Him on the mountain of transfiguration, as He shone, with a light brighter than the sun, with clothes which were white, shining, honor and majesty. 
with honor and majesty he shall crown the Lord his presence the later days his church which will be truly an apostolic church and in which Christ himself will give to himself before God holy perfect full of glory blameless without a spot speck or a wrinkle and the most amazing part of all is that God finds faults in his angels but in his church he does not because the church shall be sanctified with the blood of Jesus the power of the Holy Spirit because spot speck wrinkle cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven this is the mission the mission of God towards Christ to sanctify the church and to establish her holy this is what the father told Jesus to do but my beloved brethren as the father sent Christ with a work and mission in the same way Jesus Christ himself says this to each one of us with a mission and if we read and I'd like to read this my brethren it's the first chapter of the letter to the Romans a verse which when I read it I was astonished Paul a bond servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle separated separated to the gospel of God which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures verse 3 concerning his son the gospel of God is that I will send Jesus and the gospel of Jesus is that I am the Lord your God because the gospel of God about his son which was born of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead and now through him Jesus Christ we have received or grace and apostleship we receive all of us grace and apostleship and what is grace our salvation and what is our mission mission for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name this is your mission my brother in which you receive but you must acknowledge it because when you give me a million dollars in a check and I have it in my pocket if I don't use it it is useless you have received grace and apostleship for the obedience to the faith among all nations of course for his name among whom you are also the call of Jesus Christ you have a mission the church has a mission it is the new song you are not now Christ please save me it's not as the mission was of the first apostolic church for the gospel to be preached and for it to be stabilized now a new mission we have it is the obedience to all the nations for the rapture of the church it is the preparation in which Christ will do because he wants all peoples to be saved he wants all peoples to hear the gospel God's gospel that he sent Jesus Christ and Christ's gospel that he is the Savior of all men and he desires and wants for all people to be saved and come to repentance the acknowledgement of the truth and it is he who poured out his blood on the cross of Calvary so the remission of sins will come and it is he who baptized with power of the Holy Spirit and fire and it is he which sanctifies his church and it is he hallelujah the son of the living God who will resurrect his church and will present the church to the Father God the Father you have grace you have received grace and apostasy for the obedience of the nations use it since God reveals it to you since God reveals it to you shows it to you since God says he has given it to you as you use your re being reborn as you use your baptism with the Holy Spirit as you use your testimony use now your apostleship which God has given you through Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit Church of God of the later days hallelujah use 
the power and the glory because a mission without grace and power, without glory of God, there is no mission then. Hallelujah. We are not a little church. We are not a religion. We are not a gathering of people who are good. We are the church of the living God. The establishment and the foundation of the truth. We are a church holy, apostolic. We are a church in which Christ builds and Christ according to His holy good word. We are the church of the rapture towards heaven. We are the church holy, sanctified, which continues to be holy following Christ. His mission in our midst. Christ is in our midst. He sanctifies us. He increases us. Christ is in our midst. He wants to prepare us. He wants not only to receive us, but He wants to send us to confess, testify His holy name, to confess God powerful, full of glory, not idols, not vanities, Lord of all powers, Lord of heaven and earth, full of glory, King, who His beautiness reaches perfection. You are a church of a true God, which is alive. Hallelujah. Amen. And this church has power and beauty in its sanctuary. This church is not a little church. It has power and beauty, but where? In holiness, the holiness of the Word of God through the Holy Spirit. Sanctify yourselves. Prepare yourselves to meet Lord your God. Pursue peace with all people and holiness, which without no one will see the face of the Lord. Your mission is your holiness. The will of God is your holiness. Without holiness, you shall not be revealed as a church of the living God. Hallelujah. We thank God, my brethren, for His grace, for us to be today and every day in His house, and to enjoy and obtain His presence, His love, to enjoy heaven. Give to the Lord, O families of the peoples, give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due His name. Yes, we must give. Not only for the name of Jesus Christ to be blasphemed because of us, but for His name to be glorified in our lives. And for Christ to glorify His Father with our fruit and His presence in our midst. Give the glory to His name. Bring an offering and come into His courts. I worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before Him, all the earth, and say among the nations, The Lord reigns in these evil times. The Lord reigns. Leaders don't reign. Kings don't reign. Scientists don't reign. People don't reign. The Lord reigns. And because the Lord reigns, the whole earth will not be moved until He fulfills His work. Do not be frightened. Evil times will come and they will increase. But the time has not come yet because the Gospel must be preached to all the nations and then the end will come. But now the Lord reigns and we are with the King. Not the King of this earth, but a King which is full of glory which reigns with all the power of His majesty and holds in His hand a staff, staff of righteousness, holiness, pureness. He holds in His hand a double-edged sword, which is the Word of God, the sword of the Holy Spirit. The Lord reigns, and especially in the beginning, now He reigns in our midst, and we all give Him glory and say, You are our King! Glorify your name which is holy. Exalt your kingdom and church, church of Christ. The more you humble yourself, then Christ is exalted. Yes, there is no holiness 
without humility. Therefore, let's humble ourselves before the feet of the great King. Let's love one another. Let's believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And let us all now sing, praising a new song to our God, our Lord of Lords, Kings of Kings, which is ready to exalt a new holy work, a word which is good to crush the head of the devil, as then on the cross of Calvary, and now under the feet of his church, as this is written, and the voice of the Holy Spirit is, Amen, and Amen, Lord, do according to your word, show us your mercy, we need your compassion, forgive us, we are humbling ourselves before you, glorify your holy name, and prepare your church, for it to be truly, in that day, holy, perfect, full of glory, without a spot, speck, or a wrinkle, so we can be there, that day, in which the whole creation hopes in, as now it groans and labour with birth pangs, which wants to be found in freedom of the sons of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen.